Hey, welcome back to Clean Cut, where we can talk about the truth about just about anything, as long as we use logic and common sense. This season, we're returning to the topic of the Psalms and their meaning. Now, a brief disclaimer before getting into this psalm. The Psalms will be numbered differently in different translations of the Bible. This is a very, very old discrepancy, and to help clear things up, I'll be explaining what number the psalm has in the Douay Rheims Bible and in the Revised Standard Version. However, the episodes themselves will list psalm numbers as they're given in the Douay Rheims Bible. Sorry if this is confusing. Anyway, this is Psalm 32 in the Douay Rheims Bible, but Psalm 33 in the RSV. A Psalm for David. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye just. Praise becometh the upright. Praising God and thanking him for his good works are appropriate things for people to do, provided they don't do them insincerely. Give praise to the Lord on the harp. Sing to him with the psaltery, the instrument of ten strings. Psalteries and harps were both stringed instruments of the ancient world, often used for worship. Sing to him a new canticle. Sing well unto him with a loud noise. A canticle is a type of hymn or chant. We're being told to sing to God in a way that hasn't been done before, showing both devotion and creativity. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done with faithfulness. Faithfulness is a virtue, so God has it most perfectly, like all the virtues. He loveth mercy and judgment. The earth is full of the mercy of the Lord. The same word here translated judgment can also mean trials or justice. The mercy of God is a part of his justice because it gives people the chance to turn to him and be saved. By the word of the Lord the heavens were established, and all the power of them by the spirit of his mouth, gathering together the waters of the sea as in a vessel, laying up the depths in storehouses. This is probably a reference to the first chapter of Genesis, verse 6, and God said, Let there be a firmament made amidst the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Let all the earth fear the Lord and let all the inhabitants of the world be in awe of him. Fear meaning fear of offending God, or great respect for him. We should never be terrified of God. For he spoke, and they were made. He commanded, and they were created. Therefore, our relationship with God matters more than our relationship with any person or group of people. The Lord bringeth to naught the counsels of nations, and he rejecteth the devices of people, and casteth away the counsels of princes. People have a lot of advice to offer and a lot of different ideas about how things should go, but God knows so much better that there's no point in him taking advice from anyone. But the counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. When God gives people advice or moral commands, it's definitely and indelibly right. Blessed is the nation whose God is the Lord, the people whom he hath chosen for his inheritance. You can never have better protection than to have God on your side, and he chooses who he'll side with. The Lord hath looked from heaven, he hath beheld all the sons of men. From his habitation which he hath prepared, he hath looked upon all that dwell on the earth, he who hath made the hearts of every one of them, who understandeth all their works. God knows the full truth about everything and every one through and through. The king is not saved by a great army, nor shall the giant be saved by his own great strength. People place a lot of trust in weapons and muscles, but none of it will overcome someone protected by God or salvage a cause that God has rejected. Vain is the horse for safety, neither shall he be saved by the abundance of his strength. The horse here refers to armed soldiers on horseback. These things won't protect the evildoer from justice, because everyone faces judgment eventually, army or no army. Behold, the eyes of the Lord are on them that fear him, and on them that hope in his mercy. You might think that being watched constantly is an uncomfortable place to be, but remember what St. Peter wrote. Because the eyes of the Lord are on the just, and his ears onto their prayers, but the countenance of the Lord upon them that do evil things. 1 Peter 3.12 Having the eyes of God on you means that he will be more ready to listen to your prayers. Having the face of God turned away from you is much more terrifying since it means you're doing evil. To deliver their souls from death and feed them in famine. Just some of the many things that God can and will do for his faithful people. Our soul waiteth for the Lord, for he is our helper and protector. We crave the help of God in a deep and incessant way, because he is who we were made for. For in him our heart shall rejoice, and in his holy name we have trusted. 
As St. Augustine said, our hearts are restless until they find rest in God. There is no other source of joy which can truly satisfy us. There are many stimuli of positive feelings, but only one source. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, as we have hoped in thee. Because we place our hope in God, we plead for his mercy to be shown to us, so that we can be protected and be happy. This is a psalm about the relationship between ourselves and God, what we depend on him for, and how great our need for him is. There just is no other way to eternal life and happiness. That's all for now, so keep asking questions, and thanks for watching.